Hey everybody, this is Ian Lowe of L Form Design, your B2B website experts. And with me today, I have Jeff Karomi. Jeff. Hey everybody, my name is Jeff Karomi. I'm the art director here at L Form Design. For the past 15 years, I've specialized in SEO, user experience, and interface design for B2B clients. Cool. All right. So today we are reviewing SPS spindle parts and service. So Three second rule. What do these guys do? Well, it's pretty obvious based upon the text and the imagery, right? Precision spindle repair and on site taper grinding. All right, but they have the good old carousel, or I like to call slideshow, and the other element of this is let's see, what else do they do? Bearing in industrial products and services. Okay, so do I know what they do within three seconds? Yes. Do we dislike slideshows? Yes. Why? Because you're hunting for the other items. You have to wait a few seconds here. And I'd rather they list the items below the hero area using directionals or calls to action. So right off the bat, I think they could have done a better job with the intro area. How about you, Jeff? What do they do? And how do you think they uh, handled the hero area so far? Yeah, I mean, as, as much as we've, um, you know, consistently talked about how much we hate slideshows, it is pretty clear what they do. I mean, right off the bat, that's one of the benefits of having a very straightforward business name or even website name, you know, SPS Spindle Parts and Service, right? Okay. Spindle related, spindle parts, spindle service. It's spelled out very clearly right in the name, which is good. Um, the problem is you're right. All of these slides kind of talk about different things that they do. And generally it's taking about 20 seconds to get through here. We know people usually spend about, you know, three to eight seconds on a homepage on average. So they're not gonna get through this stuff. Um, you know, they're not going to sit here and go through slideshows one slide at a time. And these slides are pretty slow. So you're right. Really, the way you want to structure any hero is that you want one big kind of explanation, your general overview in your in your main hero area. And then you can kind of spell out the items, the other items that you want to use, uh, you know, below. So that way people get, okay, here's what, the, here's their main idea. This is the main part of the business. And here's all the specific kind of subsets that, uh, that you may be looking for. And then I allow people to get into those investigative and just give them an overall idea of, okay, um, this is the, this is at least the right website. I'm looking for this, these, pro, these products and services. I'm at least in the right spot. I can continue investigating. Yeah, the other thing I'm noticing is that they have these logos like Mole Map, Mab, and then they have, uh, I think there was Spanini. I apologize, I'm probably mispronounced. Oh, there it is. Let me go back to the previous slide. You can see here Capavini, I'm assuming that's at a, a known brand within their industry, within parts. Um, yeah, so. I guess that would be another item that they could possibly, if that's important, again, I don't know their industry, I don't know their vertical. If that's important, they might wanna highlight that somewhere on this homepage. Um, let's, let's continue down here. All right, so welcome. You know, that's so funny. Well, I feel like welcome messages, welcome to our website is very 1990s. I haven't seen that in a long time. So yeah, I, I mean, I just feel as if a welcome's unnecessary in this day and age. I might be wrong though. Um, SPS Spindle Parts and Services and Industrial Leader in Precision Spindle Repair. Great, that's awesome. Welcome, they do it welcome again. <laughs> At SPS, we believe that every call or email from our customers is a chance not only to offer our spindle repair, repair service, but an opportunity to solidify trusting group. Okay, so, you know, ultimately, it's a nice greeting, but I believe unnecessary, right? What's one thing that all users do? They skim, they don't read, they look at headlines. So high-speed spindle repair, great. Spindle motor repair, fantastic machine tool. Spindle repair, great. CNC, spindle re rebuild and repair services, fantastic. Uh, choosing SPS is easy and reasonable. So they have their key differentiators, right? Reasonable pricing, superior turnaround times, 
I'm writing the, I'm reading this too fast. Expertise based on integrity and experience. So, oh, there they go. We have a logo. We have low one logo here. Um, they also have a, a contact form. You and I have talked about that at length. Is it having a contact form on the homepage? I don't think is the right answer. Having a telephone number though in the, you know, the header, which they do. Interestingly enough, they have a toll-free number here and then they also have a different number up there. Uh, they have an email address. Uh, that must be a problem for spam. They must get a lot of spam because they're showcasing their email right there. Um, I think ultimately overall, up oh, there they go. Here's some of the brands we service. So this again must be something of importance within their industry. So I just feel as if they do to do a mediocre job highlighting their services, highlighting the brands. Um, they say they're great at customer service, but ultimately, how can we bolster that with testimonials, video testimonials, written testimonials? Um, they could maybe showcase logos of companies that they've have helped. I'm sure there's a lot of big names that they have worked with. It's not apparent here. Um, I don't know if they signed NDAs, but sometimes you can't highlight a few household brand names if they have worked with some big names. Maybe they work with GE, maybe they work with Honda, who knows? So, um, Jeff, what do you think about the, the, the whole body of the uh, homepage overall? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot to unpack here. So we'll go, go down it kind of one by one. Um, so at least the directionals up top here, um, at least they have some, you know, trying to get people kind of flowing into the website. They definitely could be more specific. You want to kind of be a little more specific. It would be nice to have a section that, you know, sends you to certain types of products or, or product categories, you know, when it comes to services, specific services. Uh, and they have this one area dedicated for their YouTube channel. I mean, if you're doing YouTube, uh, which we are, you may want to feature a video on the homepage instead of, you know, kind of, kind of a directional. If someone wants to find you on social media, they're going to go to that channel and try to find you there versus coming to your website. Um, as we move further down, I will call out kind of the uh, right here. Now, I love when clients are, are um, say that we are the industry leader, right? Especially when they are, um, you know, that's not being boastful, it's being truthful. Problem is, all right, you're the industry leader. Well, I don't see any proof of that. You just do stuff, right? You immediately get into these services, which should probably end up being a lot higher on the website so people can jump into this immediately. Because while it is nice to talk about your company, um, you really do want to focus on the problems you solve for your client versus just who you are, your history, where we have trusting relationships. A lot of the stuff... you you know, skimming through here is stuff that you, any person base level expects from a company. We just got out of a meeting yesterday where one of our clients were like, oh, our differentiator is customer service. And my immediate next question is what makes your customer service better, right? Because everyone who goes to a company, whether it's B2C or B2B, expects a baseline of good customer service. Um, that is just a, a given, right? In this day and age, you need to have good customer service. Absolutely. Um, and if you're going to make kind of claims up here, you need to have what we call proofs. So if you're talking about we're the leader, then like you said, maybe that requires having a, a logo field below of clients. Maybe it, it, it's a big testimonial. Maybe it's a couple case studies saying this is how we, here's how we solved a bunch of problems. And those proofs are what support the, um, you know, what support the, uh, the message that you're putting out right here and keeping those together you know really does help it goes okay this is the claim that we're making here's the proof that we have on that claim um you know and then go go look at that proof maybe the case studies are are gated or maybe they have resources or or, or form on there and that's how you start leading and start getting people into a uh, into a funnel a lead funnel on your website absolutely um what do you think about these forms these elements on the right hand column uh, I'm looking at my screen just to please I'm selecting the key. Okay, that's a that's a that's a fun little uh, that's a fun little captcha Free. like Free a little puzzle. Yeah, yeah. People people I've really love. That. Uh, yeah, that's a that looks like it might be kind of a custom one. Uh, it, it's got to be. I've never, I've never yeah. seen select the icon. 
I, it's one. much nicer. I always hate when you have to go and like find all the buses and then you have to like squint at these tiny images and find every bus. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's really annoying. That's, that's, that's Google's um, recaptcha. So, yeah. 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 The classic recaptcha, most people. I do agree with you. This is a little high up here. Um, you know, you haven't really, you said a little bit about your services, but you haven't gone into detail before we get down to this contact form. So I would have this positioned maybe after some of the services you do, after some of the proofs you do, if you really want it on the homepage. Um, it doesn't have too much information, which is good. There's what, one, two, three, four, five fields here and a submit button. So it's not a huge, I'm, I'm sure these. this is an area that would get kind of, uh, uh, is more about generating leads and generating quality leads, right? The less forms you have, the more likely someone is to fill it out but the more likely a, a spammer can fill it out or someone who really isn't suited, you know, is, is just kind of like a smaller business. Maybe you don't service. We'll, we'll fill it out and kind of gum up your sales there, you know, trying to, uh, yeah. trying to figure that out. Um, but at least they do have a lot of contact information. So they have a sticky area with, and while, yeah, we do recommend not having emails, at least it's there. Um, social media probably could get rid of this and focus more on the, uh, that contact information, but it is good that they have this stuff set in a six sticky header so that no matter where you are, you will always have access to some of that information, right? If you want to make a quick decision, you want to make a quick call. Um, the only thing missing from up here is some sort of, if someone wants to fill out a form and they're in a page that doesn't have a form, where do they go? There should right. be a contact us online button, probably instead of these social media buttons, I would replace that with. Um, let's talk yeah, about they, the they let's talk about Twitter though. For also, don't forget about that. I always I always love social media integrations with websites. Oh yeah, I, I miss this. So this so if people want to see your tweets, they're gonna open their phone and they're gonna go to Twitter, the Twitter app. They're not coming to your website. This doesn't add any help to SEO, which is a, a misconception a lot of clients have. Uh, Google doesn't really consider these things when it's crawling your page. Um, on top of that, a lot of these integrations, uh, Instagram is very much um, uh, notorious for this, is breaking the APIs that they have and causing this stuff to fail. Uh, Twitter's a little better about it, but at the end of the day, you're just adding weight to your website of an element that we know people aren't really going to interact with. Um, this would be better served. You would want blog content, resources, something a little more useful to a client coming to your website and, and evaluating you as a partner than a, than a Twitter feed. I mean, the other problem that I'm seeing is look how old this post is. It's, it's literally two years old. So it shows that they have not kept up on social that's doing more of the service than being helpful. The imagery is good though. Um, yeah, I just, oh, look at this. They have other tweets popping in here from else, you know, oh, this is from 2018. Yeah, again, you know, they just need to reboot the social. I just don't think it's benefiting them whatsoever. Um, yeah, absolutely. So they have their address down here in their footer. They have 2019, so an outdated copyright should update to 2022. Um, they they have a fax number because people still use fax, obviously, in the manufacturing realm. Um, not as often anymore. Toll free, telephone. So um, I would shove the if they want to have social, right? Shove it down in the bottom, if anything, in the footer. Um, I agree with you. The sticky header is a is is nice to have. However, they should have coupled it with a sticky navigation if they're doing right. Um, I'm surprised that they have their contact information being sticky, but not their navigation. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, agreed there. Yeah, um, this header is way too large. I don't know why we need the logo to be as big as it is. I don't think that's helping them. Uh, again, this is prime real estate, right? You only have a few seconds. A lot of people don't scroll down on the homepage, uh, maybe a little bit, but ultimately shove things up by keeping your header nice and contrite. Uh, and then let's see here. Let's talk about, let's dive a little bit deeper. Yeah, now. before we dive deep oh. in, I do want to talk about the overall navigation. So Ian, if you want to demonstrate here, if you go into products, you can see there's this weird little animation happening. So scroll down yeah. through the products. These, it's like kind of this like swoop, like it flips over. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, this is the kind of animation that someone puts in there because they're like, oh, that's really cool. I like that. But it ends up just hurting you because people aren't really expecting that kind of interaction from here. So it's it's just a little strange, like kind of does like a little a little flip. It's surprising. Yeah. I you know it's something yeah. that definitely we you don't want to overdo your navigation. You want to keep do, it simple. Let people get to where they're going. What I will say about their navigation is they kept the they they utilized a simple navigation. Our company, our services, products, blog, contact us. That's it. They didn't come up with some roundabout way of naming their their individual sections of their website. They're straight to the point. They're uh, common, meaning widely used throughout the web. So that's good. But you're right, right? This is distracting. This is not helpful. This actually is giving me a little bit of eye strain <laughs> because I'm trying to focus on the text and, and it just, it's moving. So uh, sometimes the wow factor, right? Keep it simple. I'm not going to say stupid. I just did kiss it um especially yeah, when it comes absolutely. to navigation yeah uh all right so let's go into the products area oh the other thing is they have uh, uh a rollover which we you know because of microsoft surface the ipad pro people are used with touch devices and on on click is better not a not a rollover anyway so now we're in the main products area this is the products landing page or listing page Let's see what they have here. Oh, interesting. So that's smart. At least they did this rudimentary, but um, they do have a products main page and then you can get into the individual sub pages here or you can get through them here. That's good. Um, they're obviously highlighting a partnership that they have with this manufacturer. All right, utilizing our experience machines. All right, and they have a little bit of text here. So that's okay. Again, I don't know if this is any value. You're in the products area. They're talking about service. Um, I think I would really talk about the products that they can, that they do work with. But anyway, so let's jump into new spindles. Let's see here. All right. So SPS is Forge partnership with Italian spindle manufacturer. Okay, that's good. And I'm just skimming this really quickly. It's available to stand there. Uh, yeah. Okay. So they're just they're just redirecting people to the Capolini website saying, hey, this is a couple of things you can get. What I would do in this area, if they're, you know, they're highlighting a manufacturer, I would bring in not a, just a few, maybe two to three products that they sell a lot of on this website. And then, yeah, redirect someone to the Capolini website. That makes a lot of sense to me. But again, I think by highlighting products that they sell a lot of, people go, oh, you sell that great. Okay. And that's also good from an SEO perspective. I'm looking, you know, US service provider, Capolini, maybe they'll come up in Google for those, for that keyword search, for that query. So, um, all right, Jeff, why don't we, we just looked at a product detail page and then we looked at the product listings page. So why don't you, why don't you weigh in here? Yeah, I mean, there there are, so the this is very much a bare bones product listing page. I will say it's not super evident that these are links. It just looks kind of like a bullet point list. Generally, you want to kind of have a, a, a kind of full directional here. So an element or like a box, for instance, you know, you, so you would have Box some image, some, yeah. some text below it, you know, and maybe, you know, in this layout, you would want like kind of two columns, you know, because there's not too much room. But you could spread that out and, you know, have at least, even if they're just the categories, kind of move into them. Um, and that makes it much more obvious that there are, are further pages in here. Right. Um, now, you can get through, it does replicate what's in the, the product's navigation, which is good. Um, but yeah, and if we go into that new spindle, so all the basic stuff's there, it just could be done a little bit better. But at least you can get in. If, and if we go to this detail page, so it's good. That's a good amount of content on this page, right? Really explains things. It's nice and clear, which I do like. Um, and if we scroll down, so they do have, you know, a couple, a couple image examples. Some more would be nice. Uh, again, it's probably because they don't have a lot of room because 
all the pages are this kind of old school kind of uh, main column and side column uh, design pattern. But, um, you know, they do have useful information here. So they just do list out the spindle types. These don't break down into separate pages, which would be nice if they did. Um, but maybe there's not a lot to put in there. And they also do have, and I love seeing this, is you have, you know, different PDFs, different resources someone might need. Uh, generally, when people are looking for resources, they'll go to a full resource library and want to filter or find what they need, or they'll go to a specific product thinking, hey, maybe the SDS that I need is on that page. So always having this stuff there is, uh, is, is good. And, oh, wow. uh, and they have a lot of useful information here in this PDF, too. Mm hmm. So it looks like, you know, they're just providing the uh, the company's PDFs. But again, you know, it saves you saves you space. If you bought it from uh, this company and you went to their website to find it, you know, you have it in two spots. Right. You don't have to go and try to Google your way to it. Um, so that's good. I, I like that. I, really, it's the bones are here. All the information for a product detail page is here. Just kind of expanding on it, providing more as much uh, good information to people as possible. Small small snippets of what some of these items are would probably be good for SEO. You know, very, very minor things outside of kind of overall layout of the website, mm -hmm. which does need to kind of be updated. This is a little constricted for information, right? Agreed. Just having kind of one column here. You could definitely space it out, allow people to, you know, scan and, and skim your page a little more effectively. Let's go into another product detail page. Let's go into multi-axis milling heads. All right, I'm just going to skim this. The precision tool acts. Okay, this one. Piece. Okay, cool. So they do sell, even though they're really a service shop, they do sell a couple products here, and they have a couple images, and they have a little bit of text. Um, so, you know, ultimately it'd be great if they had a form that was specific to each product, right? So if I filled this out, I could go ahead and select, Hey, I'm interested in learning more about the multi-axis building heads here. So, um, yeah, having a contact form specific per product would, would have been better. They just have a generic, you know, contact there and, um, okay. I don't know if you want to add anything to these product detail pages, but I not think you did. really. I was yeah. going, yeah, I was going through. They do have a kind of a varied amount of information. I would say it's kind of medium uh, on the information. It's good. It's it seems to be well written. Um, there all just comes kind of some minor minor issues. I mean, if you go to um, the customized spring, uh, yeah, customized spindle uh, spindle seals at the bottom. They yeah. do have a uh, YouTube video that's set to private. <laughs> uh, so, okay. you know, got to be careful of that kind of stuff. This may be kind of like a third party video that maybe they yeah. don't know was set to private or something like that. But, you know, it's it's a good attempt, you know, broken image here too. So you do want to fix that. You do want to review kind of your pages every once in a while just to make sure things aren't getting broken and and, and things like this don't happen. But it, you know, it's it's a good basic, you know, they have bullets, they have intro information. So I would say it's moderate on that side. Um, and if we're taking a look, I have been, as you're going through on my side, kind of going through and looking for H tags. And it seems like the website has pretty good, um, yeah, H tags. For instance, here, customize yeah, spindle that. seals. That's the H1, upgrade your spindle seal with Garlock you know, et cetera, that's an H2. Um, yeah, there's other H2s on this page. So yeah, they're using, oh, they're they're using some, proper, uh, proper structure. They're doing some good. proper structure here, which is good. That is good. Um, yeah, often that's very easily overlooked if you don't know what you're looking for. Um, so, so yeah, all that's doing good. And I've been checking pages as we go through. A homepage is, is basically a similar similar situation. All right, so I just clicked on the R services and went to the services listing. Again, same difference, right? They're just listing, they look like bullet points like you had mentioned earlier, but they're actually links to the subsections. Um, again, they have actually have a little bit of text here, which is decent. Although spindle re rebuilding is what SPS Spindle is known for. We offer more than just spindle rebuilding services. We 
company of living machines. It's good. I mean, it's not amazing, but again, you don't need to be amazing when it comes to a corporation or you know a service provider like SPS. You want to get down to the okay, what can they do? Okay, great, you guys gearbox transmission repair. Let me read about that. I even know you did that. So, um, yeah, and this page I, I had just landed on. This is a good amount of content. It's yeah. it's very easily you know it's rudimentary, but again, this is easily skimmable. You see, oh, here's the bolds. Here's the information if I want to read about it. It's really yeah. easily skimmable page, which is good. Um, you know, it, it seems like they've done pretty well overall within the structural framework that this website gives them, right? It doesn't look like there's a lot of options, um, but the, the information structure is, is done pretty well. Uh, maybe some... you would want to, maybe you'd want to call some of this information like incoming inspection. You may want to call that out as a to, header versus in paragraph, here. but other than that, um, you know, all, overall doing a pretty good job of getting a lot just... of information into this, into this yeah. site. Yeah, just a strong tag. So they could have made that like an H3 and H4, like you said, and separated exactly. that out yeah. to make make it more Google friendly. Um, but they did overall good job. I mean, I, there's a rhyme and reason also to the hierarchy of how things are listed here. It doesn't look like it's on alphabetical. Um, it's kind of it's kind of arbitrary. So oftentimes I tell people, you know, you know, most pros popular services list up top. And I'm assuming that's the way they handled that, but I don't know. Um, I'll screw up here. All right, so again, they have bullet points, but they have some good bullet points, right? If you're looking for large screws with 19 inch diameter, that, that works for us when doing these ball screw repairs. So uh, they, have, they probably have some useful information that people wanna know. Let's see, let's go to our company. Does it go to the same page as our values? Let's see, I bet you it does. Oh, it does not. Okay, so they have an our company page starting 2003. Our mission statement, again, broken images, fix that. Let's see, let's read their company values. Getting the job. Fit. All right. So they obviously, they have some pride in their business, which is great. That comes through with the website. They're obviously very customer oriented, but very customer oriented. Um, yeah, I really would like to see testimonials, you know, peppered throughout their website. I think that would really bolster their claims. Um, let's see how the contact us page is different. Nope. Okay. So they have the same contact form. It looks like there's obviously this is being loaded onto the right hand column of every page. Click here to complete our RNA form. Oh, so they do have a more robust form. Look at that contact information. And it's kind of hidden. I would put that up top here in the header or in the navigation. I had to really- Yeah, I that. mean, I can, I can kind of understand why you, so here's the problem with kind of the structure of the website. Um, and this is really obvious once you hit a page like this. This is a big form, right? Yeah. But if you go all the way to the top, Ian, how many forms are on this page? Just two forms. So which form oh, do you fill out, right? Exactly. Because what? you see, and you've gone blind to this because it's on the column, but this is this is just part of the site structure, right? So it, if you go, uh, this page has two uh, forms on it. Oh, I understand what you're saying. You have the, the, the general inquiry form that's across every page. And exactly. Then the, so yeah. I, can, I can see why they opted originally that going to contact us has just contact information because you already have a form here. Yeah. But, and that's why we've kind of gotten away. You really want to, there's certain pages you want to tailor what is on that page. And there's certain pages that can be templated and, and replicated multiple times. But when you've kind of taken and you've kind of said, okay, this is how our entire website works. It does kind of limit you in what you can do, right? So um, this was a pretty common design pattern in, you know, the, the 2000s, especially. Um, but it does come across, you know, is, is a little dated. And I am, you know, I am surprised, like, this doesn't even really look like you could click on it. It says click right. here, but it's not a different color. There's not a button. You know, there are different ways you can handle it. And, and um, you know, I think you could definitely, uh, they could definitely make some improvements with kind of how this works. Because that is, 
I'm looking at that form. It is a pretty beefy. It is a pretty beefy form. It's a beefy form. It is a beefy. Fields. It is a beefy yeah. form. And it's this would one. be the kind of form that would be if you're trying to generate leads out of this. Um, you know, this would be your. This would be qual. No, no normal quick person who wants a quick question is going to fill this out, right? They're going to opt for the smaller form yeah. for something quicker. Hmm. All right, let's go into the resources or what they're labeling as blog. So, okay, I clicked on blog and it actually, the inside spin, so I can click on videos, our blog. So again, the these subsections. Okay, they do have a couple of videos here. Look at that. Nice. I just, oop, video just came through, the audio came through. So that's good. You know, I love the fact that these are, you know, they're look, they're amateur videos, but they're actually showing what they do. I think more manufacturers should embrace a low fidelity videos being placed on their website. It, it, it Again, it goes back to bolstering claims. It goes back to, hey, we actually do this. You can see this via video, check it out. And they probably shot this on their you know, Android device or their iPhone, maybe. And then they just got it up there. It's great. I mean, again, it's nice to have a well-produced video, but you're gonna pay a lot of money to have it professionally done and so just to get something up there, I, th I truly think it's better than not having any video at all, so. Yeah, absolutely, especially in the business to business space. I mean, if you actually go to their YouTube channel, they actually have quite a few videos. Let's take a look. Um, you know, four weeks, their last uh, video was, uh, uh, oh, well, sorry. no one, no one, we can't hear that. But if you go to their actual channel, yeah. Uh, yeah, and you know, these, this is great because four weeks ago was the last video they put up. And it looks like every few months they put up one. People don't expect you to have a new video every week. You know, we do it because we like to do it. But, um, you know, this, this shows, you know, like we talked about with their Twitter, like their last tweet was from a couple years ago. But if they're putting this information out now, like this is the kind of stuff maybe you would want to feature in blog posts and have on the homepage right? That yeah. shows that you're actively making content. You're an active company. And these are, these seem like pretty good videos, you know, preventing spindle failure. You know, this is kind of stuff people may be searching for on YouTube, on Google, and ideally it gets served. Um, I will point out one, one thing I found interesting. Uh, we talked about APIs. If you scroll down, Ian, uh, it looks like this one isn't hooked up because it's going to Twitter dev. Uh, which is the uh, default account for testing, yeah. uh, testing that's that right. stuff. Yeah. So that that's a, uh, again, that's you got to be careful. You got to be yeah. careful with this kind of stuff. It just shows kind of some of the pitfalls here. All right, let's go into the videos. Okay, so the video section just takes you to YouTube, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, our blog. I mean, I would, I would actually from, I'd rather see the videos actually embedded on the website or at least a few more. But anyway, the blog. Um, it's pretty outdated, it's, but it looks like it's useful. Uh, complete large middle, every two. All right, so they're just talking about how they helped one of their clients here. And if we go into, let's read another one here. This one's again about a, a little less than a year old. Yeah. And you know, it's for them, I would say it would probably be pretty easy to generate new blog content. So we're just at that YouTube page. What I would do if I was them and I wanted some quick blogs to put up maybe one a month, right? Go to that YouTube page, embed one of those YouTube videos like they're doing on some of these in here, and then yep. do a write up about the video. Do a full write up. That way you're serving. If someone wants video, they can watch the video. If someone prefers to read, uh, over watching video, they have everything there and they can even reference and copy and paste. Very easy blog content generation when you're making YouTube, right? Because you just describe what's in the video, you know, some of the talking points and things like that. Absolutely. Um, All right. So let's take this, let's take this, let's just talk about news and events. This is outdated. It's from 2014. I would just eliminate this somehow, some way. It's not relevant. It's so old. It doesn't, it doesn't help. Um, so we often see this with websites where they're old websites, but then there's sections that should be easily removed and they're not because they're, 
I think it's just doing a disservice, not helping them by putting old, I mean, this really old content. So. Right. And I, you know, I can kind of understand why this thing happens is many companies, and this is especially prevalent in B2B. Um, if you want a website and you should, because it is 2022 and everyone expects you to have a website, there needs to be someone in charge of it. Yeah. Often there is no one dedicated. You should have someone in your company whether that's on a marketing team, but is the website person that they go in, they make sure things are updated. They make sure, you know, they add pages, they, you know, proofread content, they check the website regularly to make sure things aren't broken. You really do need that because you'll get into this situation where someone will come to your website and they'll go, oh, wow. Uh, well, they do what I do what I want. And this website's okay. It has information, but uh, it looks old. They don't really do any events anymore. You know, their last tweet was from two years ago. Are, are they still even kicking, right? And that's all the stuff people process in a few seconds. So you do want to keep that kind of kind of going because if they have a competitor who has a much better website that has updated content that has, you know, they're doing events, they're, they have content that's pouring into the site, they're going to go, oh, that web that company is more active than this company. That's just how humans kind of perceive websites. So it, it is kind of vital. And especially over the past two years, we mentioned this in another video, a lot of people had to rely on their websites, right? When yes. everyone was kind of sequestered away for, for quite a while. So um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just something that you always should have somebody on your team that goes, your total job, what we pay you to do is to take care of the website. You got to take care of it the best you can. Best uh, you and can. then you kind of have this problem. You, you kind of have this problem solved. Right. Again, you can think outside of the box. Who's someone who can write effective emails? They should be managing the website. Well, they're not technically savvy. That's fine. You know, ultimately, so they should be taught on how to manage the website, how to easily update it. And then usually they can get stuff up there and keep it active. And we're not saying you have to invest a ton of time every month. We're talking about an hour or two, right? Don't go crazy here, but definitely it's a living, breathing item that's really outfacing, right? People are constantly checking out your website just maybe to peruse it, to get a telephone number, to get your email address, fill out a contact form, or actually see you know what is available. So ultimately, um, yeah. That, you know, this, this needs to be updated or removed altogether. So that being said, that is the end of our website review for today. Jeff, why don't you take us out of here? Oh, well, we got to do our grades, Ian. Um, oh, we didn't do our grades. Oh my goodness yeah. gracious. So ah, I'll, uh, I'll start off here. I'm, it's Friday. I'm eager to get out of the office. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> All yeah, right. It's so, only 11 a.m. You have still right? have some time to go. Um, so let's go into grades. So I, I think I'm going to give this a C plus. I'm going to give it a C plus because there is a lot of content. It's good. Um, they obviously care about getting new content up through YouTube, which is great. Um, can they improve that? Can they make better workflows to allow that content to get on the website? Yeah, and it does need a lot of improvement on hierarchy, especially on the interior pages and especially on the home page. But there's a lot of good content here. The thing that really drags this down is this website, like you mentioned, looks like it is from um, the early 2000s. And that is people kind of expect a little bit more from a website. You know, they're not looking for some amazing 3D experience, especially B2B. We don't recommend that at all. But you definitely want something that is on par or looks looks up to date because the, if your website is your first impression, then what you people are getting here is that you're capable, but you're kind of dated in old school, right? If you want to be, you know, look like you're capable and also up to date, you definitely want to update kind of the look and, and hierarchy of the site. All right. So my grade, I'm going to give this a solid C, not a C plus. Um, I think it's a good attempt. But the hierarchy, the site flow, um, it, it, like you mentioned, it's very dated. Um, yeah, I just, I, I think they're obviously 
doing a good job embracing YouTube and social, that's not evident in the website. And I think more often than not, engineers or people utilizing their services are going to go to, they're not going to be on YouTube. They're going to be first checking out their website. So you really need to make a first strong impression. Um, it looks like they have good imagery too. The photography is strong, um, a little bit low resolution. You can see it's a little pixelated here, but I think, I think they have a lot to work with. They just need to, uh, take the incentives to, to take it to the next level and spend the time to work with an agency like us, or at least uh, hire a freelancer to take this to the next level, so. Yeah, like I, like I usually say, this website has, has really good bones to work with, right? It's, it's, all, about, it's all about filling out all the, all the smaller details. Agreed. All right, now, Jeff, take us away. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Um, yeah. So, thank you again for everyone watching. Um, you know, remember to subscribe to our channel if you like this content, uh, and if you want more B two B, you know, opinions on websites. Hopefully, you guys are getting some good information out of this. Um, please give it a like. Please give it a subscribe, uh, and leave a comment below. Do you agree? Do you disagree on what we reviewed? Do you have any other insights, things we missed that you think would be useful to people? Please put it down in the comments. Um, all of this helps us reach more people. And uh, that's basically my outro. Uh, thanks very much, everybody. And uh, take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye.